Brandon. What's up? What what you got? What's what shoes, bro? Show me the show me the heat, bro. What's going on? I'm just I'm just organizing some stuff. It's it's pretty good by brand. Um, no, it's not. What the hell? I mean, you see some stuff come together. There's a couple. Okay, it's not. I, I still have a lot of work to do uh, in terms of organizing. Pull out some stuff, bro. Let me see what you got going on over there. Aren't you gonna show us all the sneakers you got seated that you're just gonna resell on StockX? I can't. Anyway? No, no, lower. You can't ask me those type of questions, man. Don't don't worry about what I got as a gift and what I did. I don't want to see any Reeboks. Don't worry about that. Do you guys want to see some heat or not? Put it out! Hold on. I got Come on, man. Damn, I'm very much um, You all right? Send help. Brandon, are you okay? We're not supposed to touch hands, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you uh, handle it. Yeah, I'm getting out of here. Peace. Yep. Send help. Yep. That's a full size. That's a full size. She, she, she won every color. That's a full size. Hello to every single member of the FS Army watching across the world. Of course, I'm your co-host, Brendan Dunn. I'm Matt Welty. James! Woo! And we have with us here today, Dominic Chambrioni, the shoe surgeon. My man. He is a custom sneaker maker. He is a student of the Guy Fieri School of Business. And uh, important note, he's not an actual doctor. So just in case. Uh, you sure? Dom, I, I, as far as I know. I don't know. Dom, we're happy to have you on the show. No, thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to be here. Just so everybody knows, Dom was going to be on the show regularly, but of course we can't get to the complex office right now. We can't be in the studio, so that's why we look like this right now. It's coronavirus quarantine time. I'm hoping my skin looks okay. The editor will throw like an anime uh, filter on hey. my skin. But, uh, we're still going to bring you full size run every single week, just as you know it. Uh, this is what it's going to look like for the time being. So, Dom, we're going to talk about your career in sneakers, obviously. The first thing I want to talk about, though, the sneakers everyone's wearing. Welty, what do you have on feet? All my sneakers I was planning on wearing for the rest of the season are in the office, um, and I can't get to them. So I have on a pair of uh, Alzheimer's X Adidas Gazelle Supers because they're sitting around the apartment. I haven't worn them on the show yet. And plenty of Adidas behind you, just in case. And New Balance. You know me, I just wanted to make sure that we started off these quarantine FSRs with heat on my feet. So I had to go tap these Traverses right quick. Love the Black Sheep Skate Shop in North Carolina, one of my favorite SB shops in yeah, the entire of the whole of America. And I got the the Yeezy Power Phase Cream Calabasas. Okay, I, I feel like I don't see that Power Phases anymore. I don't know. I mean, I just went, I mean, it's been crazy times, and it was the first shoe I saw. I just moved into a new house, so it was the first thing I put. I put so. I'm doing all black uh, Reebok Classics gum sole on the bottom. This is kind of my version of the black Air Force One, just in case we have to start looting or anything like that. Like, this is where I'm taking it. Um, guys, we know there's a lot of important, very pressing issues happening in the world today, but we're still going to talk sneaker news, so let's do that. The first thing we want to discuss is how the coronavirus COVID-19 is affecting sneaker resellers, sneaker businesses. I mean, I talked to a couple of resellers and they hadn't really seen as of last week any effect on their business just yet. As far as resale prices, people were wondering if the market was going to crash. Dom, have you seen a difference in your business? I mean, traveling for my schools, you yeah. know, like, um, having school is kind of, I mean, it's not kind of, it's definitely just shut down at the moment until, you know, we start doing digital and do uh, online classes, but it's definitely affected it a little bit. Have you ever done an online class before? No, and you know what? You know, it's something I've been talking about for, you know, five plus years, so, you know, no better to do it, right? Like, to do it now. Forced to do it. Nice. A lot of close friends of mine were uh, telling me that they were getting, not screwed, but like they used to like resell a lot of like high value shoes to China because that's where like the market was for a lot of that. And obviously yeah. a lot of issues with shipping things to China at, at the moment and just kind of everything shut down. So they like the bigger like resale values, they set up kind of like disappeared on like the high ticket items as of late. So I saw some brands shutting stores down. All of Nike's stores in North America are closed. Adidas at first didn't. And then they kind of caught a lot of uh, heat for that. And then they closed their stores after that. I feel, I feel like they even went an extra mile to make it better. Like you had Adidas and Puma like squashing their beef from the 1940s, the CEOs of those two companies like getting together. So I feel like Adidas like quickly scrambled to to, uh, to make that right, you know what I mean? People were getting mad in my mentions, being like, why aren't you talking about this? And I'm like, dude, it just happened yesterday, relax. Obviously, like we said, we know there's more important things going on in the world, but we're always gonna look at this through the lens of sneakers. So uh, the next news topic we wanna talk about, um, the other day, PJ Tucker 
went and announced that he's going to be opening his own sneaker store in Houston, uh, hopefully opening in October. He said he's nice to he's going to have collaborations um, with a lot of brands, which is uh, cool to see. Everyone knows PJ Tucker's like the biggest sneaker guy um, as far as like collectors go in the NBA. So to see him, the biggest sneaker guy. Whatever. I mean, I don't know what the, 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 the term is for it, but... Sneaker man. <laughs> sneaker king. Sneaker king. What do you mean the sneaker, sneaker king? king? I didn't... That, that's not a... Whatever. Just whatever. No, I, th I think ha him having a store is genius because then it, get, it allows him to do collaborations wh where it's not even, you know, like, you know, he, he's, a Ni he's a Nike guy. A store for him gives him more of the freedom to continue to wear all the other shoes because he is. He's the sneaker king. I'm really happy too. I hope this opens up the lane for other like NBA sneaker guys to to have more of a part of the conversation than just like buying shoes and getting shoes. Like I want to see like how they feel about this stuff like from a retail standpoint. I think the store is called The Better Generation. Like what they said, the plan is to open in October. So I'm just like, I'm excited to see what PJ's take on sneaker retail is. Dom, yeah. you work with PJ a decent amount, right? Yeah, yeah. No, PJ's, you know, one of, one of my favorite guys to work with just because he's he knows what he likes and he will do anything and try anything. When you sell a sneaker to PJ Tucker, how much is that sneaker? Shoes range from 3500 to 5000 I feel like a PJ Tucker sneaker has to be, like, even more than that. I feel like he wants the most. Nah, not quite. I mean, believe it or not, he, he's, he's still kind of a, a simple guy. He just, he's specific, and it's not too crazy. You know, I've done some shoes that have, have even for Those LeBron, too. Oh, crazy. oh yeah. Does he get the homie price though? PJ for sure. Yeah. So Don, we talked a lot of news and I want to make sure that all our watchers, even new FSR watchers, that let everybody know that what's going on with the virus, we definitely take it serious. Like guys, we are actually shooting this in the in the comforts of where we're stuck at right now. And we want to make sure that people stay entertained during this because we have to stay home. Dom, to keep it going. What's your earliest sneaker in memory? Yeah, man, my earliest sneaker memory. I mean, I get, I mean, the earliest one was like buying dad ass Supremes at Marshall's. And then I think I was in the seventh you grade. Then back in the seventh grade, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to go back. You want to stay football field, man. But yeah, I mean, it was, I, I colored a, a pair of Data Supremes with a, a orange Sharpie because in high in middle school that you, I couldn't wear red or blue or yellow and you know those are bright colors. And I wore orange, so I, I colored them orange. You know, freshman year of high school, I got the, my cousin let me wear her original 1985 Jordan 1s and like that Ooh. shoe, the original, like going as a freshman and all the seniors had Jordans and they were just like, yo, where'd you get those? And that like, that's what started everything for me. <laughs> What a flex. I didn't even know what it was at the time, you know? I was just like, oh, beautiful. <laughs> gold, man. Gold, gold, gold. Goddamn. Outside of the first time you like colored up the shoes, how did you actually get into like customizing sneakers? Um, I started getting Jordans early. I would, you know, I was working in the mall and I'd get people with backdoor shoes. So then I can continue that feeling of, I could wear something and not have to talk to any, like have to actually have to say anything and I would be uh, acknowledged and then, and then that the feeling ended because you know everyone had the same shoes and you can't wear the same shoe twice and then for me to get that feeling again and that's when i just picked up an airbrush an airbrush and all white mid mids mids camouflage and went to school and then got that feeling again and i was like oh i made that feeling myself and of course the paint fell off and then i had to keep searching i mean Time went on where I had to figure out quality and all of that. So it went from, that's, I guess that's, that's how it started with an airbrush. Big up to all the uh, Vallejo Jordan connects you had out there, man. I, yep. Yeah. It was, it was Vallejo. I want to know who's the first big celebrity you made a pair for? I know there was like Will I Am, Jermaine Dupri, and then I guess Justin Bieber was like a whole nother level, right? Yeah, see, I think Jermaine Dupri was one of the earlier ones, but that was because my, I mean, this was, you were signed to So So Def? Yeah. Oh, I man. wish. Yeah, I mean, you should have seen the video. Like, I, this was like, this was ten plus years, and uh, it was my friend was like working in Vegas as like you know they they all know someone, and then he was like, oh, you should make some shoes. I made some shoes. I make shoes. And then Jermaine Dupri did a YouTube video like ten plus years ago, and he was like talking. They were talking shit because they're like, oh, this is fake skin. I mean, I wish I could find the video, but. Wait, Jermaine Dupri was like shitting on the shoes you made? Yeah, him? they were kind of like talking. They're like, they called it fake skin. Fake skin. Damn. That's what no, you got to do sometimes no. to keep PETA happy. It was. God damn, AD. That's like old man shit. What's the fake skin you got on these damn shoes? Yeah. It was, it was a real croc too, so. 
But I mean, that was <laughs> exactly. That's why I'm like, what the hell is wrong with this old man? Dom, your you know your work takes from like other brands. You know, you work on you know Jordan and Adidas, all that sort. Nike. Do you ever get like in legal trouble with those companies? Or are they cool with you? Like you know, redesign their shoes and selling them or. Yeah, I mean, I work with I work with the brands. I work with Adidas. I work with Nike. Um, there's things that I could be doing that could get me in trouble. That I would I would you know be profiting a lot of money. Like I've been asked, oh, why don't you order just soles from China, or why don't you make shoes in China? And it's like because that's my integrity to the brand is it's America, baby. Being able to purchase or have a client send me their shoe and then deconstruct it. Like we're paying resale prices just to take apart a shoe. Do you ever feel weird ripping some of those shoes apart where you're like, oh, this is like a classic shoe, I shouldn't touch it? Not like the current hype ones. If it was like a, if it was an OG shoe, yes. But usually when I get an OG shoe, it's more of like, can you fix this? I mean, I remember the first time I did feel weird was when someone sent me the band Jordan 1s and I was just like, yo, you know, these are expensive, like, you know, but it was like, not, not anymore. That was the 1985 pair? No, this was, it was the newer one, but it was, you know, it's still resale yeah. value of whatever, 700 bucks, a thousand bucks at the time. I just like making stuff. I like taking things apart. What about the other way around, uh, Don, when it comes to like brands ripping you off? Uh, that's the, you know, no, no word handshake. What? Real quick, we're not doing any handshakes in this time. So no handshakes of any kind. Left foot. Air bump. But are there specific shoes where you feel like a brand like took that idea from you? No, and and I, I don't I don't ever look at it like that because you know I get the I'm having the freedom to be able to make a custom sneaker. I don't think what I do is 100% original. Yes, building things from scratch and focusing on the quality is that. Yes, there may be things that are have similarities, but why I do what I do is just to help enhance the brands. It's not to take anything away from. It. Yeah, I feel like people at brands. Uh view custom sneakers as kind of like a knockoff version of what they do. I know a lot of people in general don't like customs. Wealthy is a famous, Wealthy is a famous hater in general, but also a famous custom hater. Like, what do you say to people who say like, uh, custom sneakers are basically knockoffs or not the real thing? That's his opinion, right? It's like, I, I don't say anything. It's like, what I think is a knockoff or fake is really just losing the integrity of the brand and like, you know, making, you know, custom shoes out of fake factories or stuff like that. And it's like, it is what it is. Um, I mean, everyone has a different lens that they're looking out of. And, you know, if everyone had the same opinion, life would be boring. I think I think sometimes I've just like seen custom shoes and I get like you get excited on seeing it at first and then you realize it's a custom. And then like maybe like the the excitement around it kind of like dies down a little bit because it's not like a manufactured shoe. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel I feel that with you, too. I, I, I feel the same way, especially with how much custom stuff has been happening. It's like now anyone can custom sh customize shoes. So it's like, why is it even s truly special anymore? Wealthy, I, I, I got to point this one out specifically. I know you were upset at that Drake Jordan 12 with the Stone Island patch. Wealthy, I know. I know you felt like that was uh, not the right call. I, I mean, personally, I just felt like Stone Island, like if you're into Stone Island, it's usually people who are, like I know Stone Island's changed over the years, but it's usually people who are into like football culture and wear Adidas. So it's like, until that point, I would never imagine someone wearing Stone Island, like wearing a pair of Jordans with it. What about the Stone Island uh, Nike? Yeah, but I think they did, I think they did that to like get away from the, the label behind the brand a little bit with like all the things that it's associated with, with like football hooliganism in, in Europe, but it was just- You got no faith in Drake, obviously. Yeah, it just wasn't, it wasn't, the the Jordan really wasn't for me, but just to keep it honest. No, no, it's dope. I think, yeah, I mean- Honestly though, do you like, there's so many customizers out there and there's like good work and bad work. Like, do you think the bad work kind of like lends like a bad name to custom shoes? I mean, the way I look at that is like, there's bad Nike designs and there's good Nike designs. There's some of their shoes are bad. So as a whole, I don't think it does. I think individually, it's just like a brand. If, you know, if a brand provides bad work, then it's more specific to the brand. I think that's why, you know, I've built the name is more about the quality and the craft behind it, which I'm a little upset that, you know, Trinidad's not wearing a pair of shoes of, of mine, but it's okay. What, you, I mean, I keep it close now, Dom. Don't no, act, act like I don't yeah. keep it close. Now. I keep what it are close. Those? You what don't know that? where I'm at, bro. I'm, 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 I'm out and about, but I just keep, I keep a pair of shoe shirts just close, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I'm always ready, brother. I'm always ready and strapped. You know how I did.
true story i asked him before this episode i was like how many pairs do you have he's like i don't even know i was like how many he's like i don't even know <laughs> i literally have them all over the, the world it feels like anywhere that i got like some sneakers slashed i got a pair of dom's shoes dead ass i just happen to have boots right here because we've we've upgraded to doing all type of things outside of sneakers but i mean now i'm not trying to flex but you know dom are there other like customizers out there you kind of like tip your hat to give me three dom you gotta have three give me three i need three dom i want to hear no bullshit. i don't want to hear you cop out I'm like i don't know man i just been looking at my own shit. give me three dom <laughs> Man, I'm I'll take your time because it's, 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 it's I don't know. Easy. I don't look at anyone else's stuff. Like I, I don't like it's, the it's, blinders on. You know, you know, you know what happened when I first started doing custom custom shoes. It was like I was looking at everyone's shit and we was talking. To, we were all talking. It was like a community, and then it was like I was never growing and I was never getting work done. And then once I just put the blinders on, like that's when it took off because it was like I didn't care about what anyone else was doing and. That's how I got to where I'm at. So, so is there beef then? Who do you hate? <laughs> no beef. No beef. Hilarious. Beef just uh, just cow skin. Oh god. Peta Peta is gonna hate this episode, Dom. If oh. you get us taken off YouTube because because of, of all this exotic uh, fur and stuff you're using, I'm gonna be really upset, man. You gotta do a Tiger King custom. Have you seen Tiger King yet? Tiger King. You'll, you'll, you'll know once you see it. Have you, have you gotten complaints from like the animal rights activists and sort of stuff when they see your work? Has that ever been a thing? Like being in LA. I've never had that issue. As long as you're treating those cows right, Dom. Um, I mean, that, that's the most important, but you, just you see the exotics or leather that I use, so we use recyc recycle material. It, for me, it's not just about one thing. It's like, how do we continue to push and help the world? And we've used everything from real leaf material that I've actually uh, flew in, to Brazil to develop, the mushroom material. We've we continue to to innovate and push things. Mushrooms like magic mushroom. Oh, yeah, I mean, you can, if you if you actually lick the shoe, yeah, you you start tripping. <laughs> <laughs> Fat Joe needs that. Right? Get Fat Joe a pair of those. <laughs> Dumb. When you have to, I remember you know, um, you were saying you know, from thirty five to five grand according to the shoe. What? What is the most expensive shoe and material that you have ever had to like collect to make a sneaker? The the all gold LeBron Croc with diamonds was pretty expensive. We got a new Hermes Croc with golden diamonds. There's actually a bracelet that comes off the shoe and then you can wear it with golden diamonds. Dump, the LeBron shoe cost $100,000, is that right? Right. How is that possible? How is this shoe cost $100,000? I want to explain this. There's real golden diamonds, right? Yeah. De okay, development, the labor that goes behind the 3Ding. The you send a miner out there? What? A miner to get miner. the gold. Yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. I mean, I mean, if you sold uh, anything at the at the same price you're making it for, you're gonna go out of business, right? Right. So you you know you don't the overhead costs. I mean, there's so many things that are variables to why things cost what they cost. What's it like working with LeBron? LeBron's the man. He, you know, he, he loves, he, he loves it. And, and I mean, I couldn't ask for, you know, anything better is just when, you know, these, we, when, when all of these guys like really appreciate it. I'm gonna have to make Matt a pair of Adidas and he's gonna see. Do you, do you ever get like annoyed by some of the customers requests? Like they're too like picky with like what they want or they didn't like how it came out and you need to change things. Is that ever like a thing? I don't, I wouldn't say I, I get annoyed. I think it's a good challenge to be like, Oh, this stitch was one hair too low, and it's just like it's cool to see how people are looking at things. Even now, when I teach these right. classes, I'm teaching uh, students how to look at a shoe. So now, when they pick up, and any of you guys too, if I were to, if you guys were to have one, take one of my classes. When you go to a store, you would look at these shoes so much differently, just because you would see all of these details that you're not normally looking at. From do you the think that people, do you think that people don't realize the extent to which maybe like the Nikes or the Adidas are buying on the shelves are like not that well made? They are well made though. That's the thing. Like Nike makes an amazing product at an amazing price. Shoemaking is probably one of the dumbest businesses. <laughs> like producing shoes is 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 not the smartest business. Trust me. You gotta huff chemicals all day. <laughs> Dom, uh, every single week here on the show, we punish someone in the worst take section for something terrible they did or said last week as decided by the YouTube commenters. We make them switch out their shoes for something awful. 
it is me this week for saying Dens of Perdition on the Big Body Best episode. I feel like you've worn that Coogee sweater in many Dens of Perdition. That's a that's a solid look. I mean, I, I don't know what those words meant just now, but I'm going to find out what Boy, that meant. Boy, you're a savage. I'm gonna a word find savage. Out. I'm going to come back however long it takes me to find you, <laughs> and I'm going to find out what that meant. Listen, that, that was too tasteful a quote from too classic a movie for anybody to understand, apparently. So I am punished. Um, tell us who earned that distinction this week. We'll get them next week. Uh, it's working a little bit differently. We don't have the most terrible shoes to give me because we are at home and we have limited stuff to pick from, but we all have some mediocre stuff in our collection, so I will switch out my shoes for um, these. Uh, this is a... Uh, are you going to have socks with us? Um, what do you think, Dom? Socks. Okay, we're going socks with the Ugg Tiva Chewbacca collaboration. Um, very Wookiee sneaker moment right here. Uh, like I said, tell us in the comments if you got the worst take. I have a, I have a good guess. You guys will keep giving it to me. Wealthy's been avoiding it like all season. But yeah, he's very good about that. Been playing it cool this, uh, this year. Okay. <laughs> so Dom, we also do a segment, brother, called Drip Flipper Skip. Right? Drip meaning that you know it looks good on you. you know? um, flip meaning uh, you resell it. And skip, well, we don't fuck with it at all. Um, the first shoe on Drip Flipper Skip is the Air Max 2090. Drip Flipper Skip, though. Drip. Welty? It's one of those shoes that, like, you want to say that you hate because it's, like, a mass market Air Max that, like, doesn't matter. But then at the same time, like, if you go to the gym when the gyms are open again, this is, like, the Air Max 270 that you see, like, everybody working out in. So I guess I have to give Nike a drip just because they're going to make a ton of money off it, and that's a smart play. So I kind of feel the same way Wealthy does. This is not a sneaker for me, but I think it does serve its purpose. And I think it's not a totally blasphemous update to the Air Max 90. Uh, yeah, I mean, Air Max Day, I mean... I think it wasn't going to be great this year anyway, but I don't think there's a lot of good product around it. But I, I think these are okay. I'm, I'm going to call it a drip. And I, just so you know, I did not get paid uh, at all this year for Air Max Day, so that's totally unbiased. <laughs> you had to put that out there, Brendan? That's hilarious. These are uh, drip, bro. Uh, whatever. Uh, these are super comfortable. Dom, do you, do you still like buy like regular sneakers or you just only wear like your customs for the most part? I love sneakers and what it's provided for me and as a as a business and a person and what it's done for the the world or connected like but at the same time i'm just in love with making shoes or making things so i mean yeah i you know i still you know that's i wearing uh the basic calabasas you know easy power phase but hey didn't didn't easy try to hire you at one point yeah i mean i've got asked to work for you know quite a few top places and it just you know check wasn't big enough i've always worked for myself you know i've and i've created this by doing things that you know a normal person wouldn't so it's like why why would you take a job all right all right moving forward down the metropolitan zx thousand from adidas trying to see the vibe right I'm skipping it yeah well how you feel oh everyone knows i'm a zx guy um big zx energy um I feel like you made these, man. So I uh, usually not a black sneaker guy, but I like that the toe box on it is 3M. They put the ZX8000, which is from the 2009 retro, to add a touch on it. Um, so it's the drip for me. I'm going to call this a drip. I've said it uh, a couple times before. I'm going on a ZX journey with Wealthy this year. I think anything to get more people on board with that line, it, more Americans on board with that line is a good look. America, Are you jumping shit from Reebok to ZX now? Listen, man, I, I'm allowed to like what I like. The other thing is like Keith... We're the same company. We're good. Boy, you ain't faithful for shit. Keith Huffnagel is involved, and we know him for his Nike work, so it's kind of cool to see him uh, shift over. I, I think this is a really clean shoe. It's a joke. So right? Yeah. This, for me, is going to be... I don't even... This is a skip. I don't know. I'm straight. I'm good. I, I could... I'm good. We'll remember we'll, that. We'll... Undefeated, Air Max 90, another collab. This one kind of confused me because I thought it was going to be another, like, white and, I don't know, other color, like, based off of the last collab, but... They came with something new. Well, T, you put me on the game. They gave a new stitch and a new facelift. Drip flipper skip. Colors, the colors are good. It's it's different. It's a different collab, so I'll call it a drip. It's a different style collab. Okay, okay I'm surprised. All right, all right, all right. We're coming around. Matt, so Matt, you don't have any Nikes? I have plenty of Nike sneakers, to be oh. honest. I used to be a huge like Air Max guy. Uh, okay. Have a ton of old Air Max. Um, I have New Balance. Boxes behind me too. Yeah, no, I, I, I love New Balance. People wanted me to say that. Um, 
So I was going to say skip because it's not for me at the moment, but I probably look back at myself in like 2009, me would be into this shoe. So I'm going to say drip. All right. No, this is a, this is a skip. I think this uh, sullies the long uh, tradition of great undefeated Nike collabs. Look, nobody can doubt that work undefeated is done over the years, but this one, like they removed the piece and the swoosh just doesn't fit with the, and the Air Max on the, ah. and especially like you, you look at how weak the Air Max Day stuff is this year compared to previous years. No, this is a skip. I love undefeated. I do love the new reconstruction. I like the Nike placement, but I really, really, really am not into um, this colorway. So it's a skip for me too. Whatever, you know, it's all good. I still love Undefeated for life. Same, but did not. I mean, come on. So, Dom, we also do outfits here on Drip Flipper Skip, but I think it's a little cooler because you're a badass and we want to do shoe surgeon shoes. So, shoe number one, bam. Who is this for? Oh, I think we just, cre I just, can't, we just designed it. We just okay, just to make it, right. What would be the price point on this, if you don't mind me asking? That one is 5,000. Jeez. Do, you, do your yeah. shoes resell? Like, do you ever see your sneakers on like the secondary market? People trying to resell them? Who like you make them for? I'm gonna have to make Matt a pair of Adidas. Yeah, when when the, the when the prices were lower, like years ago. So yeah, now those are re are reselling. You but get mad about that? I used to. I was like, wait, what? But then I was like, nah, you know. But so no. I mean, it's it's cool and yeah. Have you ever resold sneakers? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I have. I, yeah. Uh, now, my, you, of course, you're a little biased, but drip flipper skip. From what perspective? From the perspective of if somebody else made that shoe. I know this might be a little hard for you, but if somebody else made that shoe, would it be a drip flipper skip? Same materials, same work going to it. So the way I would, I would need it in my, I mean, if I saw the color. right there. I see the photo. Yeah. No, but I would, I would see that I would need to look at the quality. Like when I, I need to touch and, and feel it. You can see, you can see the difference in, uh, you know, Jordans from, you know, 85 to how they're made now. You see all of these little, or I see all of these little details of the, the changes over the year, which would, that would be a good show itself. But uh, I would say drip just because of the quality and the time that it went into these. Like, you know, we had to, you know, buy, uh, I forget which Yeezy, and then that sole is dip dyed, which is very uh, hard to do where it doesn't just run. Like, you have to do it with heat. And then this, you know, the, the croc was extremely expensive. It's suede, so it's, a, it's soft. Uh, you know, you have to make the pattern so your foot can actually go into the shoe. It's not a stretch material like a normal Yeezy, so. Wealthy? Uh, I was gonna say skip because I don't like all red sneakers. Like that's just like a thing, you know what I mean? But don't you like the Red Bulls? Get out of here. Um, so, but when you told me the sole was dip dyed, um, you kind of sold me on that a little bit. So I would say drip based off of that detail, which I think is cool. Thanks, man. Brendan? I hope uh, sold was a pun there, Wealthy. Um, listen, uh, no disrespect to Dom's craftsmanship. I respect the fact that he uh, had to send a team of commandos out to the billion jungles to kill a pack of anacondas to get this skin on here. But I, I feel like the, 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 the exotic skin doesn't look right on, a, on such a new model like the Yeezy. Like a, like a 21st century shoe doesn't look right with, with that, kind of, uh, that kind of treatment on it. So it's a skip for me. Okay, cool. Um, it's a flip for me. Um, it's a flip for me. Moving forward, woo. Woo, woo, woo! This shoe released for, I believe, thirty-five hundred. Nice, nice material. Cheap, cheaper than the actual flom dunks. They call these the Dom Floms, where I'm, where I'm from. Dom Floms. Where are you from, Brendan? <laughs> we'll put a long list right here. Um, I think it's cool that the, with the nod to sneaker history on it. Like I said before, sometimes you see custom shoes and you're like, oh, did they make a new flom? And they didn't. And I guess you get disappointed, but like, I think it's dope where people actually pinpoint things in sneakers that matter. Um, and it's nice to know that sneaker customizers, you know, are that in tune with like the history of sneakers. So I'd say trip on this one. This is a this is a flip in the most literal sense of the word because I would just take it to the bank and uh, peel the notes off and try and although I think that may be illegal to to cut the money up like that but I'm not snitching but anyways I'm calling it a flip my 401k could use some help right now Dom I mean bias but I still must ask strip flip skip sir when you look at your own work drip 
like that the dunks really took me to the next level when I was you know in high school I remember having the Cali dunks and it was like that was a big part of my life just understanding SB dunks and like how, what that did for the the culture or industry I guess you'd say this is a nod to that it's not to take anything away from it it's right Man, it's a dream for me that when I seen these I was like whoa these are these these are one of those ones no pun intended that I respect respect these are super dope last but not least so Dom tell me obviously we know it's Python so I'm not even gonna ask materials price point is this a 3500 this is like a 3500 right here right when it released I think it was 35. And that's in addition to the actual shoe, right? They have to send you the shoe, so they may have to pay $1,000 to get the Off-White Jordan ones and then you remake it. Correct. Nice, so this could be a $5,000 experience. Yep. So, okay. Were you the first person to make these in Python? Let me ask that question. In my perspective, yes. I don't know. <laughs> Cause you're the first person to do it, right? <laughs> I, I mean, I've never seen, I'm, you know. I don't look at anyone else's stuff drip because it's the craftsmanship that goes behind it. And it's like, right. Has anyone ever sent yeah. you a fake pair of sneakers and didn't know it? Or yeah, they either didn't know it or they said they didn't know it. Yeah. And I mean, you still do the work or are you like, fuck you, like, and send them back. That's when I would send them back. Would you say fuck you? Uh, nope. That's more wealthy style. By the way, speaking of wealthy style, I know we're not doing outfits, but Dom, I don't know if you know, but there's a picture of you that looks exactly like Wealthy, and people always tag Wealthy in it. We gotta, we gotta put that up here because that photo. There was, there was awesome. like, yeah, people thought we were like doppelgangers, and I thought it was weird because I don't think we look really that closely alike. But I don't know. But you don't. But that one photo made it look like it. By the way, this this one is a drip for me. Um, I, I still think this looks so crazy on the right pair of Jordans. Like, and it just takes me back to that time when you first saw like exotic animal skins on custom Jordans, and it was just like, holy shit, this is this is a different level. You know, I I, I still think it looks good here. This is a drip. Okay. I'd go flip on these if you're saying the shoes are reselling. I feel like this is one of the pairs you could resell. Yeah, you yeah you'd make money on this shit. Now this is a drip right here, man. This is this is a drip just because I've seen a few different Python ones, but I, I trust the designer of this one. So I'm gonna say that this is a drip. Like this is the Python right here. Dom, before we get out of here for the day, I want to boost the comment section like we do every week and see what people have been saying about us on YouTube, which is always a good time. So I have some comments pulled up on here from the last couple episodes. First one of them is from Rich Prieto saying. Hope one day I'm famous enough to be on this show. Rich, uh, that's uh, maybe not the most important goal to work for, but hey, uh, you know, we'd love to have you on the couch once you sell a couple million records or something. Um, Rudy Ojeda says, yeah. working from home is made better by being early to watch some full size run. We're, we're trying to keep you entertained during quarantine period. Please stay safe, but also please do watch our videos. You can go back, watch the old ones, um, whatever. But like I said, new episodes every week. Um, we also have one more from Keon Beruzzi saying, full size run has been the only thing keeping me sane in this quarantine. As a result of self-isolation, good for you. I started really getting into the show and I've watched now every single episode since dad became a co-host and made the show God level. Thank you for that, dad. And it has been a, the best happy distraction. Shout out Brendan Stash and Wealthy Repping for the Middle East. Okay. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. It's sure. Um, thank you to every single member of the FS Army for checking in for this special quarantine episode. More self isolation episodes to come this season, depending on how long this thing lasts. Of course, I'm your co host, Brendan Dunn. I'm at Welty. James! And this was. Um, there you go. Um, shoe surgeon. Not a real oh. doctor, but a real shoe doctor. Real shoe doctor. Sure. She won every color, that's a full size. Buy a six for my kids, bought a seven for my chick. Yo, yo, yo. Another classic episode, <laughs> regular shit. Regular degular. That's all we do, right? Come on, seriously, we really appreciate you, man. You guys, we've passed 200,000. We love you. We are family here. I want to keep wearing leather pants. I want you to wear leather pants with me. Don't you want to see more Adidas? One more thing, though. Click up here to watch the next one. Keep Please. those views up or over here. Got a neat exclusive. Exclusive Gucci socks. Come on, guys. Let's go for 300,000.